Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I thought we would work on the anatomy of a bacteria cell, and this could be a really great lesson it's about uh, the relationship between organic and inorganic material, um, or thinking about the digital state of 3D modeling and 3D printing, but also using this modern technology as a tool to understand the very basic principles of human or plant um, or animal anatomy. So um, bacteria cells. So um, you'll see from the screen right now that I've just Google searched uh, bacteria cell image and I thought this was going to be a little bit more daunting than it was to create. So I'm going to jump right into it. Um, we're going to create um, in uh, this exact cell right here, which if you'll see is pretty darn close to the one that you see here. Um, there could be a bit more detail work done to it, and that's something that I think would be a good challenge for you to work on. To get started, we're basically going to create these following shapes. Um, we're going to use the new old scribble tool from Tinkercad, and that's the last thing we're going to do, but it's a great way to let students incorporate and work with just using their mouse um, as a way to create a scribble pattern and or create a variety of different shapes through the scribble tool. To create the capsules, we're going to take cylinders and add spheres to them. To create the flagellum, the tail of the cell, we're going to actually work specifically with our um, featured shape generator. Uh, and we're going to bring bent pipes in and change their arc degrees to create this back and forth tail. To create the element of the cell pillus, um, we're going to use the banana shape, actually, which I think is really kind of funny. Um, and then we're going to um, just work with some regular polygon shapes to create the rest of the structure. Okay, to get started, I'm just going to move this guy out of the way, and we have a clean work plane to start with. I'm going to bring um, my work plane to a level area so it's easier for me to work with and see, um, and I can still see my example in the background. I'm going to elongate this cylinder, rotate it down on the negative 90 degrees so that it's parallel with my work plane bring a sphere in here, and I'm going to add this sphere to the end of this uh, cylinder to make my capsule. Bring this guy down so that they align together. And you'll see when they line up really well that um, it'll literally look like the sphere is added to the cap. So I'm going to duplicate this sphere and just move it over to where I want it. I'm going to grab all three of these objects and I'm going to make them into one grouped object here. That makes them all the same color as well as it makes the capsule shape that I'm looking for. To keep with my original example, I'm just going to make this yellow or gold from the preset. Um, Okay, so what else do I need to do to this capsule? I need to duplicate it and make it a little bit smaller because I'm going to use this one to punch cut the inside of my capsule out. Make it even a tiny bit smaller. I'm going to move it over, position it where I want, bring it towards me a little bit. Now I've got this nice little overlapping capsule area. And I'm going to grab the... I'm Before I do that, I'm going to duplicate this so that I've got a second version. I'm also going to duplicate the main capsule so I have a second version. These are things I should have considered doing beforehand. So I have my smaller capsule inset to my larger capsule. Again, you can see it's popping out a little bit. It's offset a little bit. And the smaller one is hollow, and I'm going to grab them both, and I'm going to click group. And by using a hollow object over a solid object, we get the reversed or cut out portion. So now that I've got this other small one here, I'm going to make this solid again. I'm going to make it green, because now I'm going to build the inside of the actual bacteria cell structure. So the inside is the cell membrane. If I'm looking at my map correctly, um, I've got my cell wall already memory, and then we're going to go from there. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and create this cell membrane here. So I have this smaller capsule, which is a duplicate of what I used to punch cut the inside of this object out. So I know it's going to be the right size. And you can see from this one, I have already cut it down to the shape I want. So let's go ahead to do that. Let's make that green. I'm going to bring in my cube, and now I'm going to rotate it so that it will match um, the cut that I've already made over here. And it's pretty close. Not exact. Um, so what I want to do is overlap this over the um, green pill shape that I've already made. And going to position this where I need it so that I can cut it, make it hollow. Because remember, the hollow object is what cuts out of the solid object. And I'm going to group these two together. So now I've got the membrane, which I'm going to insert here into this pill shape already. And position it where I want it to go. And it's sitting pretty darn close to where I want it to be, so that's great. Okay, so... Let's rotate that a little bit more to fit perfectly. Okay, so it's sitting where I want it to be. So perfect. So now, why don't we go ahead and create the ribosome, the small sphere objects that are in here. So literally, I'm going to bring some spheres in. I'm going to create a master sphere. I'll duplicate it for good sake. Um, create a master sphere. Um, bring a cube in. And again, I want to cut it at the angle that I want and that's probably about yay high bring this over overlap it without sending it out into the three-dimensional webosphere area that drives me nuts and I'm gonna bring this up so that it is on top of the circle the sphere and make it hollow Grab the sphere and the cube and group them again. Remember, that's the cutting technique. Bring this up, bring it over to where I want. Hopefully, it'll stay on the same plane I'm looking at. And there we go. I want it rotated a little bit, you know. Um, and then I'm just going to nestle it down so it sits in there. It's awfully big. Let's shrink this down. Uh-oh, it's disappeared. We're just going to bring it back up. I'm going to duplicate it and make some more. Lower it down to where I need it. And now that we've got a couple of them, a pair of them, duplicate them. Bring them where I want them. Move them where I want them. And I'm not going to worry about exact placement right now because I'm going to have to move it around the actual nucleoid or the DNA when we get closer to completing this. But I am going to make a couple smaller. Because if you notice from the di uh, example diagram, they are different sizes. Okay. And let's go ahead and make these a different green, grabbing them all, holding shift, make them a different green. We'll start with the base green that we have. And what I'll do is I'll go to custom and change it to a really bright green so that it sticks out more. Put it all positioned. Take this and make um, any additional tweaks you want to it to make it more custom. So the pillus. So I mentioned that we're going to play with the banana shape, so this is really fun. We're going to go down to your shape generator. If you don't already have shape generator content in here, you can go to this create shape generator button, um, say yes to its different requests, and start to download the different shapes. One shape that I really think I'll show you because it's really fun, and this is how you can do a lot of other custom work, is the extrusion uh, shape. And this is separate. Um, again, bring one in, duplicate it, play with the duplicated file or the original file. Just keep one in. So the really nice thing about this shape, this extrusion shape, is you can start to create really interesting organic shapes with it by bringing it in. Um, 
changing it, elongating it, for example. Uh, maybe you're going to work on a um, mitochondria cell and you want to start creating the different um, uh, pieces that sit together um, to create the different, to create the different um, shapes or groupings of the different cell anatomy. Okay, so that was just a side note. So on that note, um, okay, yeah, so I'm going to bring my banana shape in. This might be seem really silly to do this, but we're going to work with it. It'll work, trust me. So we'll make some neat curvature. You can adjust this to whichever shape you want. We can also work with the arc. Um, this adjusts where the arc lies, like the boomerang. Um, and this one adjusts the thickness of the arc. And actually, when you get to a certain area, you become concave. Um, so we're just going to bring it to something like that. Um, and you can make it less flat, more flat, whatever works for you. I'm going to make this even thinner so that it's a little bit more uniform. And I'm going to copy it and paste it. And this is a really cool option, is the mirror effect. You click mirror, and you can choose the axis of which you want to mirror or flip it. So I've gone ahead and done it on the x-axis, and now here's the y-axis, and z would be coming out at me. Here, if I put this together, all of a sudden you start to see that I'm starting to build um, the pillus shape here. But you might say to me, well, one end looks thicker, one end looks thinner. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually just shrink this down. And it's just a matter of finding how and where they come together to make this shape you want. And here we go, a little bit more precision. Um, and that even worked better than I thought it would right off the bat. So I'm going to grab these two and group them together. Again, they're solid shapes, so they'll group however I want. They won't be cut. Um, I'm going to go back to my basic shapes and bring a little square in here. I'm actually going to bring in the transparent square, rotate it how I want to give myself a nice clean edge here at the end, and grab these two group them together, and once it does it, now I've got my little pillow shape here. And I'm going to make a bunch of these. And I'm gonna make them different sizes, shrink them down collectively. You can tweak them in other ways that you might want. Let's move this guy over so I can get to this little one down here. And okay, so now I've got a couple of them, but I think they should end with a flat edge. So I'm going to do the same thing in again that I talked about, grabbing these all, grouping them. So you can do multiple objects at the same time. It doesn't have to just be one hollow object and one solid object. So I'm going to grab these two, and now I'm going to duplicate them again. And I am going to rotate these now, because I want these to be underneath. I'll off-center them a little bit. Um, and I'm going to place these where, here. Plate those where I want. Copy and duplicate. Make as many such as you want. Place them wherever you want. In this instance, they're kind of going to be placed all over the body of the cell. So you group them however you want and place them however you want. Maybe make um, them a little bit more organic in their patterns and groupings before you go ahead and place them. That's up to you. So now we've got a couple different um, cells, and you can see we're starting to build the random nature of the um, pilus, pili that are on this cell here. So, okay, 
So next thing, so that's two bananas put together, flipped and mirrored on each other, um, and that's great. So the next thing is we're going to work on the flagellum. In your menu, you're going to go ahead and navigate down to your um, featured shape generators, and we're going to choose a bent pipe. This is going to be the best way, I think, for us to build a fat flagellum. Um, so you can change it to different shapes if you want of the external and the internal part of the pipe. We can talk about the wall thickness. We can look at the pipe width. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make this just five because we don't need it very thick for the flagellum. It's a rather thin thing, um, thin element. And then we can look at the bent angle, the angle of the bend. And we can also look at the diameter of the arc within the bend. Um, so, and the nice thing is you can also, if you want, you can add a lead in length, which is just adding straight piping to the end. And then you can add lead in, lead out length, which is adding straight piping to the end. So let's look at the flagellum really quickly. So we have a nice, very curved um, object and we're gonna basically just build that. So let's look at the arc, making it a little broader and making the angle a little stronger. And then this part um, here will rotate and can come out of the back of the cell. Um, let's move this down a little bit. And what do we need? We wanna maybe copy and duplicate this and add the rest of the curve here to complete the semicircle shape. And we're gonna flip it this direction and line these up because I didn't change them much. Um, they line up really well and that is a very nice blessing, something that doesn't often happen. Um, I'm gonna copy this one more time, mirror this again, let's flip it this way. And then we are gonna end up rotating this a bit on this axis because now this is gonna come out of here and make a squiggle that moves this way. But, Ooh, I think we want the arc to be a little smaller and maybe make the um, maybe add a little length to it the end there maybe a little length here um, and maybe even curve it a little bit more to line it up maybe even a little bit more okay and let's go back to our reference image and see if we need to do much more. So we've got this curve here, this shape here. Let's flip this and do one more little shape just to make it um, a little longer and a little bit more pronounced. <clears throat> OK. I think we're pretty good here. So now we have our flagellum and I'm just gonna make it the whole thing smaller because the cell itself is pretty small. Group it just because I don't wanna lose my different elements. Rotate it a little bit so that it fits on the back of the cell. And I actually think I'm gonna trim it a little bit if I can grab it, trim it a little bit here. We're gonna go back to our basic shapes and I'm gonna bring the cube in right here, just trim it off a little bit and give ourselves the shape that I'm looking for. Okay. There we go. There's our flagellum. You can curve it a little bit more. You can change the shape of it. Not sure how much it really matters. It's really up to your preference, I think, in this instance. So there we go. It's centered. So we built all the areas. We built all the objects. We have the overall cell or the actual capsule. We have the membrane inside. We have the pillus um, or the pili um, inside there. We've got the um, outside here, excuse me. We've got the um, nuke, we've got the cell membrane, and we've got the ribosome. And I think the last thing we want to build on here is the nuclei. And this is where people get to run a little wild and play with it. And so 
if you go back, you're in basic shapes. If you just click on the scribble tool, this is where people get to just design the inside of this. And so you have a couple options here. So you're going to design in 2D and it's going to show up in 3D over here in the window. And one option is we can just scribble, click and drag and scribble if you want. There's a design. Here's what it looks like in 3D. If we click done, here's our shape. We'll make it purple and we'll drop it and position it where we want it. That's one option. So that could be the um, nucleoid, the DNA. Another option let's check out is if we go to scribble as well again, and you can do stuff like this. And then if you want to take the second option, you can trim shapes out of here, whatever you might want, and that'll clip it out. So you could do this option, you could do however you want, and that's going to make a three-dimensional shape. So I'm going to stay and use the scribble that I've made. The first one I made, I'm going to bring this over, raise it up and place it where I want. And once I place it and rotate it where I want, this is gonna give me a better idea of where I can go ahead and place my ribosome. Put all these different elements together, you are gonna get this object right here. Um, and if you want, you can grab the entire object, uh, all of its elements, and you can go to export and save it out as an OBJ or an STL again, only the selected parts will export or everything in the design depending on what you choose. So I'll choose the OBJ for printing. This is going to print very interesting. This might be a really great exercise in um, printing individual elements like we have here. Printing all these, maybe make the capsule how you want it, and then printing all these different little parts and then students can assemble this and make their own physical 3D model that comes together. All right, I hope this has helped. Um, I hope this has uh, been a very uh, a good introduction to working with a couple of the different um, options, the extrusion, um, the extruder option, and working with the um, special, with the shape generators, and then your featured shape generators as well to create a, a more organic object. Thank you.